Good morning and welcome to the daily vlog from Kimmel Bay Church. Today we're looking at 2 Timothy chapter 2. This is the third in the Essential 100 mini-series on leadership. Paul training up future leaders, Timothy and Titus, to take his place and in their turn to train up leaders to follow them. As Paul writes to Timothy in verse 2 of today's passage, The things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses in trust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. I love to think of this chain of training, how it links us back to the Lord Jesus himself, who set out to train 11 disciples and a group of women to be the foundation of his church. And we're in this chain ourselves, because those who went before us continue to make sure that the message of the gospel would be passed on to our generation. Now we look forward to the future until Jesus returns. We have a great younger generation growing up who will be passing on what they have heard to those who follow. This chapter in the second letter to Timothy is one that is very dear to me. It was the basis of the encouragement I was given as I flew the nest. My pastor used the pictures of this passage, one every week, to encourage me as I went off to university. And since then, I have used this chapter many times to encourage other young people down the years. So as the writer to the Essential 100 commentary says, we can take this chapter for ourselves and so be directly mentored by Paul, or we can use it to encourage others, thereby doing exactly what Paul urged Timothy to do. I want to spend the rest of the time looking at the four main pictures in this chapter. The first one's a soldier. No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. Now today, we may, may not favour the idea of talking about soldiers of Christ, as previous generations did. But the single-mindedness of a serving soldier has much to commend it as an analogy for Christian faith. The soldier must keep in mind what the commander has said, and we as Christians must fix our eyes upon Jesus. I can tell you that when I cease to make Jesus the centre of all things, that's when I start to get into trouble. A great old saint of Kimmel Bay Church once caught me off guard, with tears in my eyes and frustration in my attitude. He said to me, You know what the trouble with you is, Tony Colton? You're trying to walk on water and looking down at the waves. You should be looking up into the face of Jesus. The second picture is that of an athlete. If anyone competes as an athlete, he does not receive the victor's crown unless he competes according to the rules. An athlete is much more culturally acceptable to today's generation. We're a society that heaps praise on successful sports personalities. They become superheroes and we only buy the brands that they endorse. But what happens when they're caught cheating? They're stripped of their winnings, banned from their sport and sidelined by their sponsors. And this reminds us that there's no rule room for bending the rules as a Christian. Firstly, we can't qualify for the race in our own strength. We need to come by the cross of Jesus, his forgiveness and cleaning. Secondly, we need to run the race as it's marked out. Hebrews 12 verse 2, by fixing our eyes on Jesus. We must not try to take shortcuts or to do things our way. Paul speaks to Timothy at the end of this chapter, urging him to flee the desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love and peace out of a pure heart. Then we shall win not eternal life, for that's our free gift given to all who trust in Jesus, but the well done from the King of Kings. The third picture is that of a farmer. The hard-working farmer 
should be the first to receive a share of the crops. I'm not a farmer, but when I was much, much younger, spending long and dreamy summer holidays in northern Spain, I used to help my uncle with the almond harvest. We would harness up the horse and plod our way down to the field, where he would gently shake the trees and the almonds would fall onto the blanket on the ground. The hard work was lifting all the almonds into the baskets and taking them to the cart, always parked in the shade so the horse could rest and be ready to haul the laden cart back home. But the best bit was snack time. We had bread, chocolate, ice cold water from the spring and brand new nuts. Creamy and oh so different from the ones in the shop at Christmas time. If you're a gardener, you may know what I mean, that first tomato of the new season. And we can have the joy of enjoying what God is doing here with us today. We can see someone come to faith, to take their first steps as a Christian. We can hear them pray and stand with them as they share their faith. We can know that we've been an answer to a prayer. We've sent a message to someone that encourages them. We've prayed a prayer that's helped them. We get to share in the fruit of God's work and it's wonderful and very enjoyable. The third, fourth, sorry, the fourth picture is that of a workman. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. A workman who does not need to be ashamed, but who correctly handles the word of truth. One of my all time favourite programmes on TV is The Repair Shop. To see the broken and despaired of objects restored in the hands of craftsmen and women is a joy to behold. What always strikes me is the care they take and the appropriate tools they use to do the job. Indeed, they rightly handle whatever they're called to work upon. And we should be aiming to be good, skilled handlers of the word of God, the Bible. Then we can see it appreciated and acknowledged by others. How do we do this? Well, the repair shop craftspeople often say, this is going to take some time or I will need to be patient. We need to commit time to God's word and be patient, not rushing away from a passage we find hard to understand, but letting the word of God dwell in us richly. We need to find the right tools to help us in our work, not just any old Google search that might lead us off in the wrong direction. You learn woodwork from a skilled carpenter. So we can learn to dig deeper from a skilled Christian. And we want to be approved, but not by people, but by God. We need to ask ourselves, would my heavenly father be happy with the way I'm handling his word? Or would he be saddened that I treat it so lightly? Let's give a last word to the commentator from the Essential 100. The common thread of all these pictures, the soldier, the athlete, the farmer and the workman is focus. The focus upon Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, help us to be like a good soldier wanting to please you. A good athlete sticking to your plan. A good farmer working hard and enjoying some of the harvest, and a workman giving time and joy to learning and making the most of your wonderful word. Help us to encourage each other so that generations to come may have the chance to hear of your wonderful saving grace. Amen. Thank you for spending some time today with me. May you be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, whatever you have to do next. Hoping to see you soon. 
God bless.